Yes, this is a continuation of Tribe 13. Tribe 13 as it. No. Tribe 13 says to flow troops and two column troops that are more complicated. One example of that is when you add in CPCTC like we just did. Another example of that would be something like this. It's called an overlapping triangle problem. And let's begin by establishing NL is congruent to QR, okay? So we can look at that. And Q is congruent to RL. There's kind of a problem here because if I put the mark here, doesn't it look like MQ? NQ. You see this? NQ. How do I mark that that is congruent to that? If I put it here, it's going to look like MQ. If I put it here, it's going to look like MN. If I put it here on M, I wouldn't be able to really draw the other one. With these overlapping problems, what I suggest you do is identify what triangles you're going after. L and Q. L and Q. And redraw that triangle separately. And the other triangle is QRL. QRL. Now it's easier for me to say, okay, NL is congruent to RQ. And Q is congruent to RL. How many pieces of information do I now show as congruent? Two. Two. How many do I need to prove triangles are congruent? Three. Three. So I'm short one. What's my missing piece? My hidden piece? QL is the same in both cases. It's a shared size. So I'm going to be able to say that they're congruent because they're the same. What's the rule for that? Good. Reflexive property of congruence. So shall I do it as a two-column group or a flow group? Flow group. Okay. So I'm going to establish NL is congruent to RQ. Put it in the box. And what's my reason? Given. Then I'll say NQ is congruent to RL. What's my reason? Given. What's my next step? I've got this taken care of and this taken care of. I haven't said this yet. Um, IQL is the uh, University of Alabama. Good. Reflexive part of the congruence. I'm sorry? It's congruence because I'm putting congruence here. There is a reflexive property of quality as well. I'm just choosing to not use it right now. Are these three pieces enough for me to say the triangles are congruent? Mm -hmm. Yes, I've got three pieces, and what situation do I have here? SSS. Yes, yes, yes. So I can say triangle L and Q is congruent to triangle QRL. I right, side, side, side. And which arrow is in this? All of them. All of them, all three. There's only three to go into it. To finish my proof, I say? This is an example of a more challenging one because the information that you didn't know is a little harder to find. Question? Um, no, it's got the ink on it to work the red one on the right. It's hard to see. Okay. So, any questions on this one? So, um, it says one like that, you just take them apart and you I think when you have overlapping triangles, you can take them apart and it's easier. Do be careful, because how many triangles do you see in this picture? Three, five, four, four, five. <laughs> There's the blue and the green that I pulled out. There's also this one in the middle. There's also this one over here and this one over here. There's a lot of triangles going on. There. <laughs> so be careful with it, because you have to be aware of which triangles you're aiming for. You can prove to pull those triangles out. Okay, what I'd like you to do for the rest of the class, please, is if you haven't already done them, do 7 through 10, which are like this, more complicated, and 11 and 12, which are like the CPCPC. You're attacking one step on the end. Okay, we'll see you again.